EU relations, and particularly the gap between member state policy and EU policy and the rhetoric of EU policy as opposed to the actual kind of economic uh, links going on. I'm not really going to concentrate on that sort of thing. I'm going to look at the kind of normative arguments that are there between Russia and the EU, but I would suggest that it's not a question of this is all just kind of froth on top and the real stuff is the economics, because I think some of those normative issues are actually about real questions of, of politics, which there's, there is a struggle with between Russia and the EU, and of course we can see that uh, in Ukraine uh, today. And perhaps one explanation is that, for, okay, uh, Israel-Palestine is within the neighbourhood, broadly speaking, but it's not quite as close and not quite um, so kind of contested as uh, the relationship between Russia and the EU. So what I want to talk about then is the Russian talk of double standards, um, which is a phrase which I came across a fair amount in previous research, um, particularly uh, looking, up at, uh, looking at the breakup of Yugoslavia and then issues with Georgia, um, Russian accusations about uh, double standards with uh, intervention in, uh, over Kosovo and then recognition. Um, but recently I've been going through a lot of official statements from the last few years, not to do with this, but it was a phrase that kept popping up again and again, so I was really struck by uh, how this term was appearing uh, in quite a variety of contexts. Um, to give a flavour, this isn't, of course, official stuff, but this is a Russian Today programme, which was uh, on, I guess, a few weeks ago, looking... Um, they cover Ukraine, but they're also looking at um, anti-Russian sentiments in the, in the West, basically. And that's what this program's about, that's what these guys are talking about, and they're all saying that it's terrible and, and so on. But at the same time, they've got these news things, or whatever you call these flashes, going up. This one says eight US states, several cities and counties have anti-gay laws. Uh, US maintains warm relations with governments criminalizing homosexuality. Uh, activists on trial over their anti-drone protests in the US. Values gap, EU overlooks violence of ultranationalists in Ukraine. And on to the next one. Um, Annual corruption in EU states equals blocks, 120 billion budget. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, again, EU and US actively involved in undermining legitimate Kiev government. So you very clearly there, this accusation, not just to the EU there, um, of uh, what they're calling double standards. These are things that Russia's been criticised of doing, but look what the West is doing. Um, and then a bit more just anti-Western uh, stuff in general. These are the bad things the West is doing in general. It's quite ironic because the programme is supposed to be about this terrible image that is being portrayed in the West about Russia, but they're kind of doing the same thing. Um, and uh, this is just uh, one example. I'd suggest that spotting double standards has become almost a national sport in Russia. This is a website which seems to be dedicated towards it. Um, Vice President of, the, of America says the U, uh, Ukrainian authorities should uh, remove, their, um, remove the security forces from uh, the streets of Kiev. Uh, in America, an 84-year-old <coughs> nun uh, has been sentenced for three years for protest action, which is where she went into a nuclear facility and daubed it with paint and blood, I think, and got uh, sentenced for three years. So that's what I'm going to use that for, but th that's just to give a flavour. Um, just to kind of state what I want to state up front about um, what Russia's doing with this, and then I'll go, go into a bit more detail. Um, I think it's basically, when we look at the EU, it is an attempt to undermine the idea that the EU is a force for good in the world, that it's distinctly ethical, and that it is a norm maker or, or setter or leader of norms, that it's this kind of um, leading uh, model. And they do this not because um, they've read manners on normative power Europe, but <laughs> because they actually, uh, they may have done, but um, that they um, actually get this message from the EU that this is something that really is coming up. So it is actually there in practical politics, even at the level of dis even if it is only at the level of discourse, um, but it also relates to real issues of politics. Um, going back to official statements as opposed to kind of news uh, representations, um, actually an article back in 2005 um, looking at uh, Russia rhetoric towards the US said, over the past year perhaps no single theme has become more prominent among Russian diplomats, officials and journalists commenting on relations with the US than the refrain that the US applies double standards in its dealings with the post-communist world. And I think, so that, that rhetoric has been there for over a decade. Um, at that time, it became particularly sharp because of disputes over Iraq and because of uh, Putin's more assertive stance uh, in his second term. But now, I think it's been extended beyond what was being emphasised there, this anti-US rhetoric and, anti and focusing on the post-communist world. 
to basically talk about all the West, including the EU. Um, so bringing in the EU and this criticism of the EU, EU for double standards, I think first of all signifies that there is a recognition there that the EU as an entity is an actor, um, and perhaps also is one like the US, and I think that's part of the message, it's got geopolitical interests like the US, it's the same sort of thing, which is quite interesting that it is taking it as an actor, even though in its own kind of uh, Russian practical policy, it tries to kind of deal much more with the member states in practice. Um, that there is, um, that it also shows that there is this contest between Russia and the EU over ethical norms, and that Russia wants to have a say in developing common norms, challenge uh, the EU's claim to what you might call normative authority or hegemony, and uh, also the casting aside of Russia as kind of posing it as being outside common norms, and particularly common European norms, and I've written uh, about that in the past. Just to give a, a flavour away from these sort of things of the kind of things uh, which have come up. One, uh, as I mentioned, Kosovo, uh, in February 2008, which is when uh, Kosovo declared independence and certain countries recognised it, um, Putin declared for 40 years Northern Cyprus has practically had independence. Why aren't you recognising that? Aren't you ashamed, Europeans, for having these double standards? Um, another area of visa-free travel, and um, there's an interesting article by Tom Casey, which was in Europe Asia Studies last year, in which he kind of points out that, in the sense, Russia's kind of applying this norm of um, free movement of people in the form of Soviet space much more than the EU itself is. Um, and, but that's something that Russia is criticising the EU for, saying you're, you're all in favour of freedom of movement, but we keep trying to get this kind of visa-free uh, agreement with you and we're not getting it. Obviously, uh, talk of human rights. Um, in a uh, meeting with the EU over human rights in November 2013, Russian um, diplomats expressed concern over um, violation of rights of national and linguistic minorities in the EU in general, and particularly in the Baltic states, the growth of, and this phrase recurs again and again, ethnic discrimination, intolerance, and xenophobia in the European Union. And they point to things like the rise of far-right parties in certain countries, even into parliament and possibly government. Well, revisionism about World War II, um, such as um, SS veterans marches in the Baltic states. That's been going on for a long time, but it's become, the rhetoric about it's become particularly intense more recently. Um, so what they're saying uh, is that EU, the EU is kind of singling out Russia for criticism over these areas, but look, look at yourself. Um, and uh, so a lot of Russian rhetoric has actually challenged this idea that Russia should be criticised and saying that EU countries are doing this. Um, for example, um, Pushkov, who's head of the Duma uh, Committee on International Affairs, saying there should be an equal approach of all <coughs> of Europe member countries and that Russia shouldn't be singled out and that doing so, the EU countries are basically using it as an instrument uh, of their own interest. And obviously over Ukraine, they, we've seen this again and again actually over the last month or two, double standards in a number of particular ways about interference, about the use of force, about far-right elements and violence, um, and ultimately Russia saying that the EU supported the overthrow of the legitimate government. So what Russia is doing here is basically saying that the EU's not being consistent in the application of its principles, uh, so it's treating the same situation differently depending on the country, uh, and also treating Russia differently. That the EU is accusing Russia of doing things that it itself does in its foreign policy, uh, and also that its own member states don't live up to the norms that it's projecting and expecting other countries to do. So it's suggesting that it's not a consistent normative actor, that it's pursuing interests rather than values, and that the rhetoric uh, is a mask for those interests and a way to knock non-member states. Um, what are they trying to achieve by doing this? I guess primarily to stop the criticism of Russia, to improve the image of Russia in the world. Uh, it would prevent, they would uh, lay the basis for better relations with the EU. Um, to also destroy, I think, more fundamentally, destroy the idea of the EU as a moral leader and normative uh, pace setter. To show that the EU is not something exceptional, and this is why I think it does relate to the normative power Europe argument, I think there is something in that which suggests that, because um, one of the core ideas that I take
from that is the idea that there's something special about the way that the EU is constructed through norms and the expectation of norms of particular members, which then translates into foreign policy. So there's something exceptional, um, and that's what uh, Russia is trying to challenge, perhaps in a way of suggesting it actually acts like other states do with their own interests, uh, rather than uh, consistent values. But I think there's another message that comes out of this, and this has been pointed out by uh, other writers, such as Tom Casey and uh, de Baderleben, who suggest that actually what you're getting here is Russia also promoting certain norms, talking a normative language, including in some areas common uh, norms, um, but arguing uh, in favour of particular interpretation or application uh, of them. And I think that's an important thing, and it has been written about by other people as well, suggesting that actually what this gives is some sort of possibility. Was that the one? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, that there is some sort of possibility uh, of engagement. What I think has been interesting is that there is no kind of EU response to all this rhetoric. And I think what that signifies, and uh, this is one of the problems, I think, is the, uh, the fact that the EU basically doesn't take Russia as an equal, and that's their point. Um, and one result of this, and I think this is where the idea of rhetorical entrapment is interesting, what Russia is trying to do is entrap uh, the EU rhetorically, saying you're saying this, you're being inconsistent, you should back, act uh, in line with your norms. Um, but for that to be effective, it needs the, uh, the accuser basically to be treated in some way as an equal uh, to, to be listened to. And I think that's part of the problem. It becomes a vicious circle, almost, that the kind of self-designation um, among, uh, quite dominantly, among a number of European Union uh, people is that, yes, the EU is a leader, Russia is illegitimate, and therefore their criticism uh, can't be taken. And that kind of prevents the possibilities of some sort of debate, because, as I said, what is interesting, part of this is about all countries have interest. But there is also that message coming across that Russia also talks the language of norms and promotes certain norms, and that there is therefore the possibility for engagement uh, on that, which I think is not really happening at the moment. 